This is Dick Zondag, the Garden Doctor, and today we're going to talk a little bit about my favorite uh, varieties to use. Uh, many years ago I was asked to do that because we do have a lot of different varieties in the garden center and in the catalogs, and they were wondering what my favorites were as far as when I planted in my garden. So what I did was I came up with uh, the Garden Doctor's favorites, and so what we're going to do today is kind of go for, through the vegetables A to Z and uh, maybe a little bit longer video but I think you're going to get a lot of information from it especially if you're a beginning gardener so what we'll do is we'll take each vegetable and we'll talk a little bit about the vegetable and then I'll give you the varieties that I uh, prefer to use in my garden so uh, of course asparagus is the A and uh, the variety that I use in my garden is Jersey Night it's a hybrid variety that uh, has mostly male plants and when you're planting asparagus if you get a variety that half male and half female which the uh, Martha Washington is the females will tend to be much slower than the males because they uh, have to put more energy into producing the seeds and so I even tell people one in the fall if you start to see berries on the, on the plants just take the, the plants and, and pull them into your hands and rub them and see if you can get those seed uh, pods off. They're little round, uh, they're about the size of a pea and that way the plant will not have to produce that seed and uh, will put more energy into the plant itself. Uh, asparagus is also a heavy feeder so you can use more fertilizer on asparagus than you do on your regular garden. Okay, B, beans. First thing we're going to talk about with beans is beans are a legume and this is the inoculant that you put on the seed coat before you plant the beans and this inoculant will um, form nodules on the root system that fixes the nitrogen from the air into nitrates that the plant can use to grow and the plant provides uh, the, the carbohydrates and things for the uh, bacteria to grow so it's uh, called a symbiotic relationship and it uh, uh, favors both uh, both plant, plant and bacteria. Um, if you want to try and see what, what whether it does good or not you can treat part of your beans and not treat part and see what the difference is. So um, inoculant so we're going to go right down the packets. Um, the, my favorite uh, bean has been my favorite bean for a very long time, Blue Lakes 274. It's an excellent variety that's good for canning or fresh and it produces a lot of beans. And before we get too far into this, these are the ones that I like because I have a very good soil, we have a very good silt loam, uh, very deep and uh, it produces a very nice garden. If you have a different type of soil or you're in a different climate you may want one of the other varieties and so by having a notebook keeping track of what varieties you use and if they do well uh, you'll know what to order the next year. So going on from there. Um, another really good bean that we have is called Annihilator and uh, what we'll do at the end of this video is we'll put a list of the of the seeds with their product number so that you don't have to take a lot of notes. My uh, favorite as far as a bush yellow bean is goldenrod. Uh, they have nice long pods. They also are very good fresh or frozen. A new type of bean, a newer type of bean are the French fillet beans and if you ever go to a banquet or to a wedding and you have the beans that they don't cut up and you put them on your plate, it's more than likely one of the French fillet beans. Uh, the green one that I like best is Maxi Bell and they make a very nice thin uh, long uh, bean um, and they're very tasty. The yellow uh, French fillet bean that I use in my garden is Rock Door. Uh, again, a very nice flavorful bean that the, the pods are long and very slender and they can be served as a whole bean. If you like the climbing beans, the pole beans, um, my favorite green one is the Blue Lakes S7. It was an All-American 
Uh, again, you treat it with the uh, inoculant and, um, and you plant it. You have to have a trellis or some kind of a uh, fencing or something that the, uh, the um, bean uh, vines grow on. If there's nothing there, they'll just grow along the ground. But if you have like a netting or a chain link fence or uh, uh, a lot of people use a, uh, uh, the cattle uh, um, fencing that have the four by four um, um, wires and they work really well on this one. So the green pole bean that I like is uh, Blue Lakes S7. For the yellow bean for poles, it's Monte Gusto, and it produces a lot of beans, yellow beans. I guess I prefer the pole beans because I don't have to bend down and pick them. If you like lima beans, uh, an old favorite of everybody's the Ford Hook, uh, the Ford Hook 242, and uh, um, those you let mature and you shell them out of the pods and uh, they're very good for eating. Going on to the next thing, uh, beets. Uh, beets have multi um, sprouts so you usually get more than one plant uh, out of a seed and it's the first seed that we'll have that we have seed tape available and if you've never used seed tape before um, it's the seeds are embedded in uh, sort of like a tissue paper and they germinate much better because I think the, the water absorbs into the paper and the paper holds the moisture around the seeds for a longer period of time and so you just uh, uh, make a furrow of a half inch deep, you put the seed tape in, you cover it up and you water it and away they go. The varieties that I like for uh, best for beets um, if you want a small beet, uh, Red Cloud Hybrid for the baby beets is really, really good. Um, and you have to read the des description so that you know that if you let Red Cloud get too big, it, the middle tends to get a little woody. So if you're just using them for baby beets, you use that one. If you want to get them a little bit larger than Detroit D Supreme, which is a selection of Detroit Dark Red, will give you a much, you can grow the beets much larger and, uh, and it's very good for dicing. If you like the golden beets, um, Boldor is a new variety of golden beets uh, that has sort of a reddish coating but when you cut it open the, the flesh is yellow. The next thing is that um, I grow in my garden and I grow it every year is broccoli. It's very very good fresh and um, it's not difficult to grow. Uh, usually want to start the seeds indoors about six weeks before you're going to plant it outdoors. Um, the brassicas are cold season crops and so you can plant them out a little earlier than tomatoes and peppers and things. And so you want to get them growing. Uh, uh, my favorite is Pac-Man, although Pac-Man uh, <laughs> is being withdrawn by the producer from the market and so we'll be looking in the test garden we'll be planting several different varieties of of uh, broccoli so that we make sure that we get something that's just as good or better than Pac-Man. The next vegetable um, Brussels sprouts um, people love those little sprouts in the fall and the variety that we like here is Franklin hybrid and so you plant it in the springtime, it grows a very tall uh, spike and the axillary buds, which are the little cabbage-like uh, buds, are what you eat in the fall. They're very, very good on Thanksgiving. Cabbage. Another one of the cold season crops um, and there are a lot of different kinds of cabbage. Uh, the early cabbage that we recommend is Stonehead. Uh, the seeds can be started four to six weeks before you plant them out and they make a very good early uh, solid head. If you're growing them for uh, kraut or you want to have a giant head of cabbage, Megaton is hard to beat. It has a, uh, a head uh, uh, when you pick it, it can get up to 40 to 
50 pounds so it's very good for kraut making and um, if you just want to have a, something to brag about megaton is the cabbage that you want to use. Carrots another one of the uh, root crops that we sell again we have seed tapes available a lot of people have trouble getting carrots to germinate and we have people that have come into the garden center and they will not plant raw carrot seeds anymore. They always get the seed tapes because they come up very uniformly and uh, produce a very nice crop. In fact, I use seed, seed tapes in my raised garden and when I'm using seed tapes in the raised garden, I put the, the tapes about three inches apart and it's unbelievable how many carrots you can grow in a raised garden when you put the carrots that close together. We also have the raw seed available. Um, a good one for, uh, for uh, just a, a good sweet carrot uh, that looks like a carrot. Barracuda hybrid uh, matures early. If you want a long thin uh, carrot that's good for, uh, for slices and it's very sweet sugar snacks. Excellent variety. Um, if you're looking for just a lot of carrot, uh, this the Baltimore hybrid is excellent for growing the bigger carrots that have a diameter of about an inch or inch and a half. Produce a lot of carrots. They're either good for slicing or dicing. One of the newer things in carrots is the different colored carrots and we also have in the catalog all the different colors but we also put together a seed mix so if you want to try the colored carrots the rainbow hybrid has about four or five different colored carrots and you know you have red and yellow and white and some of the orange ones even in it so that's a very good carrot to try. The next vegetable that I'm going to talk about is cauliflower. Um, it's another one of the cold season crops and uh, you start it for six, four to six weeks before you plant it out. It can be direct sown. You don't have to tra transplant it out of a starting mix. You can direct sow it into cell trays and plant it out um, earlier too. The two varieties that I recommend are Snow Crown. Snow Crown gets a much taller leaf, so if you want to blanch the uh, cauliflower, the leaves are much bigger and you just pull them together and put a rubber band around the top. Amazing is one of the earlier varieties and produces a nice large head that's, uh, that's uh, really great. So you can either start them early in spring in Wisconsin and plant them out and uh, get a uh, early summer, midsummer uh, harvest of cauliflower. You can also then start some seeds about the 4th of July and plant them out uh, in early August and so that they mature in the cool part of the, the fall and some people claim they get better cauliflower in the fall than they do in the spring. So the two varieties, Snow Crown and Amazing. Then we go to one of the largest uh, uh, variety of vegetables that we have in the catalog and that's the sweet corn. Um, sweet corn is always really good when it comes right from the garden into your home. You, you blanch it or cook it up and serve it. There are many different types of, of sweet corn. Some of the uh, variety, the SE varieties, the en sugar enhanced. We even have some of the normal uh, sweet corns although I've found with the normal sweet corns which is what they used to grow you know, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, didn't have the sugar enhanced varieties. They taste like field corn compared to some of these sweet corn varieties. One of the things with the sweet corns now is that they have to have some isolation from field corn or popcorn or any of the other corns so that they get that nice sweet cob. Um, what I did was I picked a few of them, but none of the sweet corns that we have in the catalog do really poorly. Bodacious, a um, uh, variety that's a yellow sweet corn is excellent and many people will plant successive plantings of sweet corn uh, maybe two weeks apart so that they have sweet corn um, all late summer and fall. Another thing with sweet corn is we treat the sweet corn with a soil fungicide so that if it's cold and wet while the seed is germinating it doesn't rot in the soil. 
Now we also have some of the uh, untreated sweet corns in our catalog now because some of the people don't want to have that the pesticides on the on the uh, seeds when they plant it. If you are going with no fungicide on the uh, seed when you plant it, be sure that the soil is about 60 degrees, uh, six inches down because the newer sweet corns, there's very little carbohydrate in the seed and it tends to rot very quickly if we get a uh, cool wet spell after the seed is planted. So if you're using untreated seed, plant it later and you'll have much better luck. So um, Bodacious is a yellow one. Candy corn, another one of my favorites, a very sweet sweet corn, is another yellow sweet corn. If you're looking for white sweet corn, and a lot of people love that white sweet corn, Silver King is a very good variety. Farther on down the, the sweet corn, peaches and cream is another good bicolor. And again, some people really love that bicolor sweet corn where you have some white kernels and some yellow kernels. If you get into the real sugar enhanced, uh, nectar is another one that's a good bicolor. Northern Extra Sweet is a very good yellow um, sweet corn, uh, mid-season sweet corn. Avalon uh, is a white sweet corn and Northern uh, Nirvana is a, a bicolor sweet corn. So, you know, if, if you can't make up your mind, the catalog has a good description of that. Uh, of all the different varieties of sweet corn that we have, so it's good to read the description. Going on from sweet corn, popcorn. If you want to grow your own popcorn, we have uh, ro uh, the robust yellow popcorn, and if you grow this, again, you should isolate it uh, from other corns so that uh, that, that kernel is uh, good for popping popcorn. Um, so the robust yellow, but we also have a baby rice variety in the catalog. Cucumbers. This is one where you have to pick the type of cucumber that you want to get. So there are uh, varieties that are for uh, slicing, for eating fresh, and then there are varieties for pickling. And so you want to be sure you read the description before you order the seed or plant the seed because uh, Fanfare, which is our slicer, you get a nice long cucumber and if you grow it on, a, on some kind of a trellis or I've seen uh, um, pallets made it sort of an A-frame. We're going to have some of this um, in some of our future videos so we can see how that goes. But Alibi is a pickling cucumber. You can pick the little ones and make the, the, the very small ones or you can let it get a little bigger and slice them for your dill pickles or you can pickle them whole. Homemade pickle, another old-fashioned variety that works really well for pickling. County Fair is one of those uh, cucumber varieties that you can use both for eating and for canning. It does very well canning, but it also can be used in a smaller, uh, when they're smaller, for slicing cucumbers. Cucumbers also come in what's called a bush, and what the difference between the vining and the bush cucumbers is that the vining cucumbers don't have any uh, genetic uh, time clock, and so they just keep growing. The vines keep growing as long as the as long as the weather is right. But you can also, if you've got a small garden and you want to plant some uh, cucumbers or some uh, pickling cucumbers, you can use what's called a bush cucumber and this has a determined size so it gets about a yard long and then it stops but then it produces the the uh, cucumbers on it and so pick a bushel is the variety of the bush cucumber that we like and if you want one for eating and for uh, pickling uh, Space Master um, 80 and these are the ones that you could use in a uh, in a container too that you put a stake or something in that it could climb up and it's not going to take over the whole um, patio if you have them on the patio so that's the cucumbers another thing that um, I tell people to do 
Uh, vine borer is one of the big things that kills the cucumber. So as the cucumber vine is growing, if you put a shovel full of soil over the vine where uh, a, uh, one of the leaves comes out, on the opposite side of the leaves there's a tendril. And if you put a shovel full of soil on that vine, that tendril will differentiate into a root system. So it doesn't only depend on the root system that came out of the seed, but it'll form another root system farther down the vine. And that's true of any of the vine crops, the cucumbers, the watermelons, the muskmelons, uh, the squash. If you want to make sure that the vine borer doesn't get you, um, every three or so feet you put a shovel full of soil over one of the the uh, leaves where it comes out of the vine and that tendril will grow another root system. So if you're putting in a pickling cucumber, most people like to grow dill pickles and so I have the two different dills that we recommend, the Duquette which is a newer dill or the Long Island Mammoth and these are the two dills that do the best in a garden and can be used for uh, canning with the, with the uh, cucumbers. Next uh, vegetable that we want to go over is eggplant. Um, the variety that I recommend is called Nadia. That gives you the egg-shaped eggplant. Another thing that I wanted to talk about in general now that we've gotten to one of the vegetables, we are growing some of the vegetables in our greenhouses so that if you want transplants of eggplant or tomatoes or peppers um, you can order them. If you go to the catalog or the website um, it has a section in there on tomato, pepper and eggplants and you can order them. Now you can order them in two different kinds. You can order them on their own root which we grew from a seed or you can order them as a uh, grafted uh, plant and what we do is the the variety is grafted onto a species rootstock which makes them very vigorous and we're going to be doing a video on grafted tomatoes, peppers and eggplants that uh, will show you how to plant them and grow them and what they've uh, what we've um, what we experienced from growing a grafted versus an own root vegetable is that usually you get two or more times the amount of fruit and it's much earlier. So if you want to try a, uh, one of the grafted vegetables, they're on the website or you can order them through the catalog. So we have eggplant, we have tomatoes and peppers and the varieties are listed in the catalog or online. One of the healthier vegetables that people are now planting is kale. Um, I have three varieties that I recommend. Casper, uh, which is a green kale, um, very uh, prolific and uh, dark green. Uh, Prism, which is a newer hybrid variety of kale, which also has a very fine textured uh, uh, leaf and uh, is very good for eating. And then one that you could actually use for ornamental or for eating is the Rainbow Crush Kale. Uh, it has sort of a pinkish orange color to it on the inside and is very attractive in, a, uh, in an annual bed even. And it can be used also for eating. Kohlrabi. I only I have one kohlrabi. Uh, this is one of our most popular kohlrabis. It's called Cossack and it's a hybrid and the reason Cossack is very popular is this one can grow to be probably a muskmelon size and it's just as crisp and good as the ones that you have to grow only to a baseball size. You get them much bigger they get woody inside but Cossack does not and so you can have all the kohlrabi that you want from a couple of plants. So it's also a coal crop, so it can be started four to six weeks before you can plant them out. And uh, they can be used small, or you can just let them grow as long as you want, and they're still very good. Now we're getting down to the leek. Uh, leek is a vegetable that's used in soups and where you want a mild onion flavor. The variety that we recommend is Lancelot. It's a hybrid. 
And this is the first of the onion plants that we have. We have a producer that grows our onion plants for us in Texas and grows them. They're plant, they were planted in January already. And when they get to be about uh, six inches tall, they harvest them, they put them in bundles and send them to us. And that gets you off to a good start if you want to uh, have the plant. So we have almost all of our onion varieties and Lancelot leak in, uh, not only in seed, but in, um, in plants. The seed should be started right away. It takes a while for you to get the seed started and big enough to transplant. So I would say probably 10 weeks uh, is a good time. Also, on all of our garden packets, we have instructions on how to plant them, when to plant them, how long it takes to, to grow them, and a little bit of other cultural information. So if you have a uh, question on what, uh, what to do with them, all of our seed packets have that information on them. The next vegetable that we're going to talk about is lettuce. And uh, we have a lot of different lettuces in our catalog. We have some uh, mixes where we put different things together. The kaleidoscope mix is a very good mix to grow and that way you have different greens for your salad, but we have some individual varieties too. So if you want a sort of a heading type lettuce, uh, the, uh, sham chamisol is a very good um, heading lettuce, and butter crunch is sort of a bib lettuce. It'll grow sort of a semi-head and uh, very, very thick, uh, chewy, uh, crisp uh, lettuce green. If you're growing just leaf lettuce, um, again, there's lots of different varieties. I don't know of any bad ones we have in the catalog, but uh, the ones that I use is green ice, which is a nice uh, light to medium green. And if you want some red in, uh, leaves in your salad, uh, the new fire uh, hybrid uh, lettuce is very good. Going on, another one of the vine crops is cantaloupe. In our area, uh, it's a good idea to get the uh, seeds started about the 1st of May so that the vines are about four to six inches long when you plant them. And you want to start them in peat pots or uh, in Jiffy 7s or Jiffy 9s, something that you can plant directly in the garden because the vine crops do not like to have their their roots disturbed much when they're transplanted. So if you want to get a nice early crop, um, starting them indoors about the 1st of May and planting them out after the danger of frost is gone and the soil has warmed up a little bit is the best way to do that. Uh, the varieties that I've picked, Goddess, Hybrid, you have a, a, a medium-sized muskmelon where the meat is very thick and uh, very sweet. Uh, one of the po most popular ones that we have is Athena. Again, it's a mid-season variety, very thick meat and very sweet. And the last one that I uh, picked is Ambrosia, another one that has a very thick meat and, uh, um, and uh, it's sort of a peachy color and uh, very, very good. Okra. Something that's grown a lot in the south, but um, a lot of people are, are now growing it in the north. The variety that we like in the north is called jambalaya. It produces uh, a lot of, uh, of okra, and okra is very good in soups or uh, in other dishes that, uh, um, that you, uh, like hot dishes and things like that. Okay, let's go on to onions. With onions in uh, Wisconsin, um, onions have uh, a way of bulbing up in relation to the length of the day. And um, there are short day onions, um, mid-season, uh, intermediate day onions, and then the long day onions. In the north, we want the long day onions because those onions will grow vegetatively until the day gets long enough and the bulbing process starts. And so what you want to do with onions is you want to fertilize them with a higher nitrogen fertilizer because they have a much smaller root system and because you want to get those leaves growing 
so that when they hit that long day which uh, triggers the bulbing process there's a lot of green to make the bulbs and uh, by keeping them watered and keeping the weeds away from the onions uh, they'll make nice large onions for you. So the ones I picked for our area, candy is a very sweet onion and what you usually find is that the sweeter the onion the poorer it's going to be as far as storing is concerned. So uh, candy is one of the uh, varieties that's a very sweet onion but it does not store very well but boy it sure is a sweet onion and again these onions are not only available as seed which should be started almost immediately because you want to get them large enough so that there's something there when you plant them or you want to start with the plants and there are approximately 50 plants in a bundle uh, in the bundles that we sell so candy is number one Alicia Craig exhibition is an onion that's uh, sort of sweet but it's a much better storing onion. It's a yellow onion. Sierra Blanca is a white onion, uh, stores medium well and the old standard uh, yellow sweet Spanish is a good storing onion um, and uh, it's not as sweet as candy but it stores much better. The other alternative to onion seeds or onion plants are onion sets and those are the little bulbs that are started late in the fall and then they harvest those as little onions and in most cases what I tell people to do with those is to use them mainly for green onions so you can plant them very close together and harvest them for the green onions that you like to eat uh, right out of the garden. If you leave a few of them they tend to get a uh, uh, yellow uh, a round flat onion and they're very sharp and they do store well so if you want to leave a few of them for storage that's fine. Parsnips, Albion hybrid is the variety that I use it's a, it gets a carrot type root um, very very good in the fall. If you want to use some in the winter or um, the next spring um, you can either leave them in the garden and uh, what I used to do is cover them up with like a foot of straw uh, late in the fall before the ground froze and then when you get a good cover of snow and you've got that foot of straw you can go out in the winter time and uncover them and the ground will still be at least through January the ground will still be unfrozen and you can have carrots and parsnips and some of the root crops uh, but if you leave them till spring they get really sweet and you can have them then. Okay, peas, another one of the legumes and uh, le the inoculant that we showed you at the beginning of the video is very good for peas. And so there are three different types of peas that I think of. The first one is the uh, flat peas, the uh, snow peas, and the two varieties that I like for those are avalanche and mammoth melting sugar. And those are very good. Uh, it's, you can either let them grow on the ground, but you can also train them on fences and, or a trellis or something like that, and that way you can pick them. Um, they do like cool weather, so uh, you should plant them early so they come up and uh, they mature. Uh, and in the uh, heat of the summer, they kind of go away. The second type of uh, pea is the snap pea. And the snap peas can, use, can be used very much like the snap pea uh, beans. Um, you let them grow and uh, you let the peas inside fill out at least partially. And then you pick the pod and you can eat the pod and all. And it's, they're very, very good. They're uh, one of my favorites. So Sugar Ann is one of them. And a newer variety called Snack Hero is excellent for picking right off the vine and eating them raw. And I like that with the, with the sugar ant also, but um, snow peas are one of my favorites. If you're looking for the garden peas, extra early little marvel is a, a great early pea. If you're trying, and these have to be shelled, the, the pods are not real great because they have, a, they're very stringy. Uh, strike is the second variety that I like to grow 
because it's a little later than marble and uh, can be used. If you're growing them to preserve, to freeze, or to can, uh, Green Arrow is the variety that you want to use because it's very, very productive. The peas are quite large and they have a lot of peas in every pod. So that's the peas. And again, if you're going to use the the inoculant, what you do is you take the amount of seed that you're going to plant, moisten it a little bit so that the seed coat is wet, and then you put that powder on. And what happens then is the bacteria that make the nodules uh, on the root system will, uh, will jump off the seed coat onto the root system when it comes through and uh, will uh, increase your crop. After peas, we've got peppers. And there are the hot peppers and the uh, bell peppers. And um, the hot peppers are becoming more and more popular. And um, if you are looking for a really wide selection of peppers, order a Totally Tomatoes catalog or go to totallytomatoes.com. There are oh, probably 150 varieties of peppers there from the very hot ghost pepper to uh, some of the hot peppers that are not quite so hot. But I picked out um, a couple of the hot peppers that, um, that I use in my garden. I, what I do is I can them and I use them with chili. So Biggie Chili is one of the varieties that I plant in my garden. Mariachi is another one that uh, I use in the garden. It's not quite as hot as the ghost pepper, but it's still a hot pepper. But if you can handle the heat, um, the Car uh, Carolina Reaper or the ghost pepper are um, both very good varieties of hot peppers. We have those available in plants also. For the sweet bell peppers, there are two that I use are Big Bertha, has a very large sweet bell pepper type pepper, very good for stuffing. Um, if you get them uh, as a hybrid pepper, hybrid, or not as a hybrid, but as a, a grafted pepper, they produce much heavier and much earlier than a regular seedling. The other one I like is the old fat and sassy, which was named King Arthur. And uh, King Arthur is also a very large bell pepper that's very good for uh, stuffing or for putting in salads and uh, it just makes a lot of pepper. Now we also have some sweet non-bells which means that they're not the bell-shaped pepper but they're very sweet and one of them is Giant Marconi. Very very good green pepper that turns red. Uh, it's, it's more of a long pepper but it produces a lot of pepper. And the other one that I like uh, that's a non-bell is Carmen. It's an orange pepper that's very sweet. So those seeds should be planted probably 10 weeks before you're going to plant them out. The next vegetable is one that has a lot of different varieties. Um, and I picked a few of them that, that um, I like for different purposes and that's the pumpkins. Pumpkins have been selected and bred and you've got all different colors and sizes and and uses. So the first use I took is for making the, pep, the pumpkin that you put in your freezer for pumpkin bars or for pumpkin pies or uh, for that type of thing. Early abundance is another one that's very good for growing for the for the pumpkin itself and Winter Luxury is the one, and I guess I didn't pick that packet, but Winter Luxury is the other one that's a very old variety. We've had it for, for lots and lots of years. Has a very thick meat and very, very sweet. If you're growing them for jack-o'-lanterns, Howden is uh, probably the largest seller that we have. It has a very good uh, stem on it and it grows a medium-sized pumpkin. Uh, prize winner you want to grow a big pumpkin, it's a hybrid that grows uh, some of these 100, 200 pound pumpkins. And if you're going for the, the big pumpkin, uh, Dill's Atlantic Giant, which is kind of a squash pumpkin hybrid, and this is the one that they grow for the prize winning where they get 1,500 pounders. And um, if you want to know how to grow 
uh, a big pumpkin, we have a pamphlet on it. Too long takes too long in a in a short uh, um, video like this. The last type of pepper that are pumpkin that uh, people grow are the little pumpkins that you use for decorations. Uh, Jack B. Little, it's about a three or four inch diameter pumpkin. It's a pumpkin color uh, used with uh, ornamental corns, which we also have in the catalog, which I didn't include in this. Baby Boo is a white ornamental pumpkin that's very small. And we have one now called Bat Wings, which has orange and dark green or black on the bottom. We also have an assortment of very unusual pumpkins, the ones that get warty. So uh, the one that I picked was Warty Goblin, but if you go to the catalog or the website, there are probably a dozen different varieties that have these pumpkins that grow sort of a callus tissue on the outside, and they're not very smooth, but they're very ornamental. You use them for decoration, and actually the meat is also good. Another thing that we've found is that there are a lot of different colored pumpkins. They're green and orange and white, and so we have a uh, mix that we call the world of color. And so if you want to have different colored pumpkins, there are probably four or five different uh, colored uh, seeds uh, that will produce different colored uh, uh, pumpkins. Uh, they don't produce different colors on the same vine, but they have uh, seeds that have different colors. The next vegetable that I want to cover is radish. Radish we also have seed tapes for, although um, radish has come up really, really easily. And again, you want to read the description to know whether it's a radish that you can grow where you want them for just small radishes for uh, table use, or if you want to grow a little bigger radish, or if you want to grow a giant radish. So the, the varieties that we use for the small cherry size, you know, inch diameter uh, varieties. Cherry Bell is one of the oldest varieties that we sell. Does very, very well. Um, it's a uh, very short, 20 to 25 days, and you have radishes available. Um, Ravelli is a variety, it's a new hybrid that's more uniform and um, about the same maturity, but uh, it grows uh, a very nice uh, um, radish. If you want to grow them um, bigger than uh, the cherry size, you want to get them about the size of a, of a golf ball or maybe a little bigger than that, Champion is the one to use. It's a nice red radish. Um, it doesn't get woody as it gets bigger um, and it has that nice radish flavor to it. If you want to grow a radish that will cover a sandwich in one slice, the German Giant, uh, the radishes can get softball size and they'll be not woody, um, they'll have that nice radish flavor and you just one slice and you can make a radish sandwich out of it. So radishes are really great. Again, we have some varieties available in seed tapes um, and they do very well too. Spinach have two varieties of spinach and spinach is one of those uh, vegetables that you should make successive plantings because if the weather gets uh, hot uh, they tend to bolt and so having a uh, new planting every two weeks will give you spinach over a long period of time. Uh, the first variety that I recommend is Space Hybrid. It's a newer variety, it's a hybrid. Uh, the problem with uh, space, well it's not a problem but with space because hybrids are very uniform, as soon as one bolts the whole row is going to start to bolt. So if you're going to use Spanish, Spanish, if you're going to use space, be sure you make successive plantings. Bloomsdale Long Standing is another variety of spinach that a lot of people have planted for a long period of time. It tends to not bolt as fast as space would and it tends to bolt over a longer period of time so because one plant bolts, it doesn't mean that all the plants are going to bolt. But again, with spinach, uh, whether you're using either one of the varieties, it's a good idea to uh, plant successive plantings. The next vegetable that I want to cover is squash. Um, here again, there are so many different kinds of squash and varieties of squash, it's hard to pick the one that you want. For the uh, butternut 
type squash. Um, the only thing in the catalog that has my name on it, Dick's Pick. I don't know how I got that honor. I guess when we were doing the test plot um, variety testing, um, this is the one that I picked out and it's not only a very smooth flesh uh, butternut, but it, the butternuts themselves are about twice as big as the Waltham butternut and so it produces a lot of squash. So if you're freezing squash or if you want to use squash as a pumpkin, I mean uh, squash and pumpkin are first cousins and so if you put cinnamon and stuff like that in your squash it tastes almost like pumpkin. So this is the one that will produce a lot of squash for you in a, a small garden. Waltham butternut is the long-standing variety that people have used forever and Honey Baby is a very sweet uh, smaller sized uh, butternut squash. Very very good. The acorn squash, the one that you use for fall harvest that doesn't store very well, Table King is the variety that I like. Um, another one is Honey Bear. Also very sweet, um, doesn't store very well, but it's a very, very good sweet squash. Delicata uh, is your sweet potato squash. If you want a very sweet, sweet potato flavor, Delicata is the one that you want. We also have a bush uh, um, selection of Delicata, which means that the vine will only get about a yard long and then the plant will stop and that's very good for small gardens. You like spaghetti squash and it's kind of different than most of the other squashes because when you cut it open and you um, and you take the flesh out of the skin it comes out like spaghetti and you can eat it like spaghetti. We uh, put the tomato sauce and and uh, meatballs on it and uh, very very good. I love it and I love it with butter on it too so you can use it either way. Uh, bon Bon uh, is a winter squash that stores really well and if you want a squash that stores forever, Moor Gold. Um, it's one that we've had for probably 50 years in the catalog and uh, it's, uh, it's sort of an orangey type squash um, but it stores forever and it's a very uh, smooth uh, flesh to it. But again, there are many, many squash varieties that we have in the catalog or online. And so um, I don't know that you can go wrong with any of the squashes that we have in the catalog. Summer squash. Again, one of my favorites. Uh, one of the things that my wife and I love to have in the summertime is zucchini, which is summer squash. We grate the zucchini and we uh, grate some carrots and we saute them together with a little butter in it and um, we do a big pan full and there's very seldom that there's any left over. The variety that I like for a, for a green squash is Commander. Um, it's very prolific, um, uh, produces a, a lot of very very good uh, zucchinis and you want to use them when they're smaller. Um, and uh, you can keep picking it as long as you pick it. It keeps producing new, vari uh, new, uh, new uh, blossoms and new fruit. Um, Easy Pick Gold is a golden zucchini. Uh, again, very prolific. Uh, picks very easy and will produce a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, summer squash. One of the newer varieties that we have is called Smooth Criminal. I have no idea who named it, but it's a very, very good uh, uh, summer squash and if you want a round summer squash we have a, what's called a pool ball variety they're round zucchinis and uh, if you're going to cut them and just uh, eat them as a, uh, uh, a round zucchini they're, they're very very good. Tomatoes and again there are as many tomato varieties out there as there are um, hybridizers. So I picked some of them um, for special uses but again if you're if you're a tomato aficionado Jung's has a nice uh, selection of tomatoes but we also have a, 
a catalog in our family called Totally Tomatoes and uh, total, TotallyTomatoes.com. There are probably 400 varieties of tomatoes from the very small red to the very large colored uh, tomatoes. But in the Jung selection, um, the best early tomato or one of the earlier tomatoes is Jung's Way Ahead. And um, this is one that I, when I was a very small young man, um, I used to go with Grandpa out to the field and he used to seed the, the Way Ahead tomato seed field um, without starting them in the greenhouse. And because it's so early, uh, the, the tomatoes were always ripe, uh, one of the first ones that were ripened. So Way Ahead is one you should try. It's not a very large tomato, um, but it's very, very early and uh, does really well in the garden. It's, a, it's an indeterminate type tomato, so it grows a large vine if you let it. Some of the hybrid tomatoes that we're handling now, the breeders are producing newer varieties. They're, they're using the, the basic genetics of the variety that we've had for a long time, but they're adding things to it. They're adding disease resistance to it. They're adding more flavor to the tomatoes. And so some of the tomatoes um, that we're going to be introducing um, in later catalogs next year and the year after, are they'll have a plus behind them. And so they'll have the genetics of the hybrid tomato that we have now, but they'll have um, more flavor, more disease resistance. So Early Girl is one of those. Um, early Girl is a medium-sized tomato, but it's very, very early, very popular variety for us. Probably my favorite tomato um, of all the tomatoes that we have is Big Beef. I think it's a favorite of a lot of people. There's going to be a Big Beef Plus also coming along. But this is a beefsteak tomato. You get large tomatoes on it. Um, very smooth, um, very flavorful, and again, if you're using tomatoes for a BLT or for in sandwiches and things like that, it's hard to beat big beef. Another beefsteak tomato that's popular for us is Beefmaster, another hybrid that grows nice, large, meaty tomatoes and uh, will grow that uh, nice tomato. Probably my second favorite tomato is Celebrity. It's a semi-determinate tomato, so it grows a larger vine than most determinate tomatoes, but it has a very nice size uh, tomato that's very productive, and it's a mid-season main crop slicing tomato, but another one of my favorites. Another old-timer that we've had forever, Wisconsin 55, produces a nice medium-sized meaty tomato, um, and uh, Again, another one of my favorites. Better Boy, um, an improvement on uh, the Boy varieties, but uh, again, another nice main crop tomato. Mountain Merit, uh, the uh, breeders in this one have bred some resistance to late blight into the mountain series, and so if you have trouble with late blight, especially if you're down in the south, uh, Mountain Merit is probably one that you should use. Um, an heirloom variety that, um, if you're a paste tomato lover, Amish paste. Hard to beat this one, both as a productive uh, variety. You get some pretty big tomatoes out of this too, but they have that plum or that uh, long elongated uh, fruit and uh, very productive, very good for paste tomatoes. Um, Opelka is another one that is a very good paste tomato. Both of these are available both in grafted and in uh, regular seedling uh, out of the catalog or the, off the internet. Brandywine is one that um, is not a highly productive tomato uh, for me. Um, we usually, because it's very flavorful, we usually grow a few of these tomatoes, but um, they're not really productive, but we also have brandy wine and the grafted uh, tomato, and uh, the grafted brandy wine is a much better producer. You'll get several more fruit from a, one of the grafted brandy wines than you do from the regular seedling brandy wines. Another one of my favorite uh, heirlooms is Mortgage Lifter. There's quite a story behind this variety. It's called Mortgage Lifter because the person that 
um, that developed this uh, back in the 30s was going to lose his house and he developed this tomato and sold enough of them that he was able to pay his mortgage off and that's why it's called mortgage lifter but it's a very large tomato it's um, not the meatiest tomato that I've ever had but boy it's delicious as far as the flavor is concerned and you get a nice large tomato out of it if you want uh, a variety other than a red variety a lemon boy hybrid is a good yellow tomato less acid they're going to be adding more disease resistance and um, flavor and so there will be a, a, um, a lemon boy plus coming out Carolina Gold is another newer variety that's a golden uh, tomato that's done very well for us here in uh, the cool short season that we have here in Wisconsin. Cherry tomatoes, the last of the, ch of the tomato varieties. I guess I kind of clump cherry and plum tomatoes together because they're that nice small sized fruit that you can just pick off the tomato vine and pop in your mouth and you get that burst of flavor or the sweetness. Um, if you like a really sweet one, sun sugar. It's a yellow uh, cherry tomato that has uh, a very sweet flavor to it and uh, really, really good right off the vine. Um, sweet Million is um, the standard red tomato that uh, is a cherry tomato. It's an in, it's a determinate, indeterminate variety that has panicles of tomatoes. So as long as you keep picking them off, that panicle keeps getting longer and longer and longer so that you can get a lot of tomatoes off Sweet Million. And we're down to our last vegetable, uh, W, watermelon. Again, one of my favorite fruits. Um, in Wisconsin here, we almost have to start them in peat pots to get them to mature well. When you get down into central southern Illinois, down in that area, you can plant them from seed. But starting your seeds May 1 in a peat pot or in a Jiffy 9, so you've got a, the seeds, the, the roots growing that you don't injure. Um, I picked a few varieties out here. Sweet Beauty Hybrid is a good intermediate size uh, uh, sweet red watermelon. Crimson Sweet, uh, one of my favorites. It's a large uh, selection and we've had this one forever. I can remember the first time that I saw this was in Colorado when I went to Colorado with my grandfather on his uh, annual seed uh, inspection tour to Colorado. and. It was just developed and uh, boy, it was really sweet then and it still is very sweet. Sangria. Red Flesh. Um, it's, I think it's one of the, yeah, it's one of the, the, the watermelons. It's really, really good. Now for the seedless varieties, uh, the people don't like to spit the seeds out or they like to uh, work around them. And the last one that, that's a seedless variety is called Solitaire. Um, uh, again, there, there are um, no seeds. They have small, the small primordia, but they go down really easy. So it's the last of our vegetables. I'm hoping that you got something out of our video. Um, one of the things that I like to tell people to do is to keep a notebook because a lot of people will put that seed packet on the stake on the end of the garden and the wind blows it away and then they wonder what variety they use. So if you write things down in, a, in your uh, uh, notebook so you know what varieties you use, when you planted them, if you start the seeds indoors, if they're too big, too leggy when you plant them out, you start them a little bit later. If they're not big enough you start them a little earlier keep track of that stuff and over a couple of years your notebook will become very valuable to you so if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to our channel and hit the so that when we put out another video you get a notification and hit the like button this is Dick Zondig the Garden Doctor